and tech companies and lawmakers need to do more to protect kids' mental health. The American Psychological Association said Tuesday that endless scrolling and push notifications are particularly risky for young people whose brains are still developing. Social media companies like Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp say they've been working to protect children. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Save big during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off, plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. Valid through 417, appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. This, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers are on the doorstep of making the NBA playoffs, but they're facing a difficult scenario. If they win their play-in game tonight in New Orleans, the Denver Nuggets are waiting for them in the first round. If the Lakers lose tonight, they'll play Friday night against Sacramento or Golden State for the privilege of a first-round matchup with Oklahoma City, the number one seed in the Western Conference. Either option presents a tough task for the Lakers. The L.A. Sparks, who haven't made the playoffs in three years, had the number two and number four picks in the WNBA draft last night. With the number two pick, the Sparks chose Stanford center Cameron Brink, the two-time National Defensive Player of the Year. At number four, the Sparks chose Tennessee forward Rakia Jackson, a third team All-American. The Sparks selected USC forward Mackenzie Forbes in the third round. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Hi, I'm Tavis Smiley. And I'm Captain Mayor Emma Sharif. You have no doubt been hearing promos and expert conversations on our various weekday shows and downloading details at KBLA1580.com about our climate justice campaign, which is now in full effect. The city of Compton is pleased to partner with KBLA Talk 1580 to celebrate Earth Day 2024 as we serve, share, and help our city shine. And KBLA Talk 1580 is just as excited to join the city of Compton as we broadcast live and bring our KBLA delegation with us to help clean and beautify our community and you are invited to join us. Come meet us on Saturday, April the 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton as we fan out to clean up our city. The first 50 KBLA listeners to hit our website at KBLA1580.com will receive a free KBLA tea when you join us on Saturday morning, April 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton. Now, no show no shirt, but sign up at KBLA1580.com right now to help us clean up Compton as part of Earth Day 2024. We will see you on Saturday, April the 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in the city of Compton to do our part for Earth Day 2024. We are KBLA Talk 1580, caring about the climate, caring about the community, cleaning up Compton. First things first. First, it's the DU General, Money P. I'ma put you up on the schedule. Six to nine, eight weekdays, not two and seven years ago. We got a lot to talk about, so much to pedal through. Unapologetically progressive. Tune to KBLA 1580 to get the mess. We're your ancestors' favorite radio station. First, black on talk radio, left side of the nation. First. Me and Dominique Prima go way back. Tap smiley, making sure the station stays black. Yeah. Discussing all the issues in our community. We're hosted black and brown and others find unity. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Talk Maybe we can improve it. Digital underground, always down with the moon. Come on. So we tune in to First Things First with the Queen of Black Talk Radio. Dominique Deprima. Go, sis. Go, sis. Go, sis. First KBLA Talk 1580. Good morning and God bless. 
I'm Dominique DePrima. This show is called First Things First. And my first thing today and every day, giving thanks, giving praises, and asking for blessings from God, asking for the blessings of the ancestors and the elders, and getting it moving. We do have a lot to talk about. As always, you know what we do. If you're new, this is how it goes. Hour one, we see what's going on locally, left coast side of town. Hour two, we go national, international, and beyond. And in the third hour, we do a deep dive with the person uh, of interest or a hot topic. Today, we will be talking with um, the executive director of LA Civil Rights, um, the Los Angeles LA Civil Rights Department, and talking about the tools they are using to confront discrimination after a big win um, in uh, holding smart and final accountable for anti-blackness in their policies. You're always invited in 809-20-1580, 809-20-1580. You might want to join the chat on YouTube, youtube.com, and then go to KBLA 1580 because it's always a, a conversation inside of a conversation over there. And, of course, you're always, always, always welcome on the mic on this show, even if you are <laughs> agree, disagree, whatever's going on. I'm laughing because we had somebody call it yesterday that was on one, but it's all good. 800-920-1580. You are welcome in 800-920-1580. Jumping right into it because um, we have uh, limited time on this particular conversation. Um you know, welcoming in the uh, former um, senior vice president and chief of staff to the publisher of the L.A. Times. She oversaw staff operations and special projects. Um, she was the um, she did three seasons with the Los Angeles Dodgers as senior vice president of external affairs, um, overseeing the restoration of the Dodgers brand and the Dodgers Foundation and over a decade in real estate development uh, with Jones Lang LaSalle Forest City Development and Elcor Inc. She's uh, a lot of public service um, experience as well. But right now, she is the executive director for the LA 84 Foundation. Renata Simmerell, good morning. Good morning, Dominique. Good morning. It's good to be with you. Yeah, it's great to have you on. I feel like we've been, uh, we've been, long overdue for a conversation on the radio <laughs> long overdue long uh, overdue and yes. first let me let me let me first by giving uh, blessings and gratitude for this day um for you and what k-block does for our community and you know again it's a pleasure to be with you this morning yes indeed you know the la84 foundation is such a huge institution in some ways i mean i know you guys are in a little sort of you know building where people perhaps don't drive by all the time, but it's a huge um, institution if you look at the impact on Los Angeles, and yet a lot of people do not know what you guys do. I know, and uh, I know we have short time this morning, but would love to come back on and you know, really tell about this hidden, right, this hidden gem that's in Los Angeles. Um, you know, for those um, who remember, uh, this year marks our 40th anniversary that the 1984 Olympic Games came to Los Angeles. Um, under the leadership of Mayor Tom Bradley and Peter Ubroff. And it was um, the most significant uh, moment in Olympic history. First privately financed games, and it was the most successfully financial games in the history of the Olympic movement. A lot of innovations, sponsorship model, torch relay, television rights contract. And um, as a result of those games, a portion of the surplus from those games came to start our foundation. And for 40 years, for four decades, We've been leveling the playing field to ensure that all kids, regardless of where they come from, how much money they have, what they look like, that they can uh, experience what we know to be the transformational power sport plan movement. Yeah, and, and imagine that. I mean, of course, there's always people that aren't thrilled to see an Olympics come. I'm not one of them. I love the spirit of the Olympics, the international um, you know, exchange that happens, the incredible accomplishment of the athletes. But many times that complaint is financial and people don't realize that L.A. did this amazing thing in creating um, resources that would help young athletes and young people who aren't athletes but who um, just participate in the programs for decades to come. I mean, to me, that is such a huge win and we just don't celebrate it enough. 
No, for sure. And, and the Peter Ubroff, um, the CEO of the, of the Olympics in 1984, I mean, he really uh, leaned into um, the spirit of, of the of Olympianism and the Olympic movement to make the world better through sport. And, you know, the legacy that we've been enduring since that time, I mean, three and a half million young people, all of them in, um, you know, under-resourced, poor communities, black and brown kids, particularly in Southern California, you know, these kids are left on the margins. And while we've helped um, and supported programs that athletes like Russell Westbrook or Venus and Serena Williams have gone through, our work has really been focused on just ordinary kids, kids like me. Um, to help them have access to free and low-cost sports um, for their physical and mental well-being. You know, kids in black and brown communities are two times, two to three times more likely, you know, to have stress or anxiety and, you know, the trauma that we face in communities of color. Um, you know, economic barriers, you know, we show that, you know, households below $50,000, um, they participate at a lesser rate. Um, Latina girls, you know, Latina girls are less likely to participate in sports. And overall, 25% um, of the girls, um, you know, don't have an opportunity to engage in sports for a variety of reasons. I mean, I can go on and on with the statistics, but we've been particularly focused on how do we um, strive for equity and justice in our black and brown communities um, so that kids can find their pathways to lifelong well-being and success through the work that we do in the programs, these extraordinary you know, individuals and organizations that are showing up every day um, to help support our kids and help give them pathways. You know, that's how we've leveraged the um, Olympics and the Olympic movement in 1984. And, you know, I'm just super proud um, of the work that we've done. And I'm super proud to celebrate um, our 40th anniversary this yes, Wednesday, yes. At our, right at our Play Equity Summit, where we are welcoming and using our platform, these incredible individuals and organizations, like I said, that are showing up um, every day to make um, the life of young kids better uh, in the communities that they that they live in and their families. And so I'm super excited about Wednesday. Yeah, you guys are celebrating four decades. But uh, explain what a Play Equity Summit is. Yeah, sure. It's a thought. It's a thought leadership conference. And so we um, invite uh, organizations, um, you know, like um, Youth in Motion. Um, you know, Lindsay and his wife started a, a karate program. You know, eight years ago, ten years ago. Um, now they're uh, providing archery, so, you know, safe havens for young kids. Um, you know, we've got organizations from Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Youth Sports Collaborative, Seattle, King County Play Equity Coalition, um, uh, After School All-Stars, LA's Best. Uh, so these organizations that we support through the fi uh, finances, um, our investments on the LA84 Foundation side, um, and then also organizations that have joined what we call this Play Equity Movement where we're um, collectively advocating for uh, awareness of the importance of sport plan movement. So grateful for you lifting up our voice, you know, for your, um, for your uh, listeners this morning, um, you know, that, that connection between what sport play and movement does again to our physical well-being, our mental well-being, and how it keeps kids connected to school and safe spaces and safe environments. Um, you know, this play equity movement that we've created. And so this is an all day conference for us to really share uh, where we've been, um, what successes we've had, um, really informing our community of the challenges that still lie ahead, and then um, mapping out a plan in terms of how we can continue to advocate for change um, in those communities um, that need it most. I'll yeah. give you one example of the, of the work, Dominic, that we've done um, you know, through this coalition is, um, would you believe that recess wasn't a mandate in public schools in the state of California? No, I did not know that. I assumed it was. So there's a, uh, a colleague of ours, Senator Josh Newman, happens to be from Orange County. Um, his staff follows our work and said, you know, we should do something about that. And so last year we helped him with our youth um, voices and our coalition pass um, a bill at the state level that mandates a recess for 30 minutes a day. But more importantly, it can't be taken away from young kids as punishment for poor behavior in class. And so that's the type of system change that um, this summit. I'm laughing because you know, I'm the mama of a kid who had many a recess taken away. <laughs> All right, Dominique, I have a son with this ADHD. He needs recess. Right, exactly. Right? He needs recess. Yeah. So that's just an example of the types of, um, you know, policy change and ideas that we talk about, you know, at the summit. Um, it's a way to network. It's a way to get inspired, to get informed about the most prevalent issues of youth, of youth with, uh, and how sports play and movement 
can help them find their pathway. Yeah, it seems, um, you know, really important right now. We've kind of seen this professionalization of young uh, athletes, which, you know, I'm sure it's good for some people, but I feel like it takes away from the idea of play. And um, one thing that I really learned, you know, through my own interaction with the LA 84 Foundation is this idea of letting kids find their sport, you know, not trying to professionalize them uh, from the minute they set foot on any field. <laughs> yeah, no, really. I mean, I think the industrial youth sports complex is something like a $10 billion industry. Wow. Um, where, you know, the pay to play uh, system, 2,500 at least to, for kids to participate, you know, that's cost prohibitive for our families. And so, yeah. you know, the work that we do is really about free and low cost. And to your point, it's about, well, we'd like, you know, biodiversity of sports. Not all kids are preconditioned to want to play basketball or um, football, you know, or sort of the quote unquote, um, you know, uh, major sports, soccer. Um, and so we fund programs, you know, like karate, fencing, archery, uh, rugby. Uh, we helped USA Rugby, um, you know, institute their first program here in Southern California, lacrosse. Um, and, and an interesting, um, going back to rugby, is we saw a huge uh, increase in girls' participation, particularly black girls' participation, when we brought when we helped to bring rugby here. You know, because just our body types are preconditioned for you know that sort of um, type of contact. And so over the years, I think we funded something like 50 different sports. Um, and then we've also expanded our work to include play and movement. Um, I tried double dutch believe it or not, for the first time at our play day last year. <laughs> All right. Good job. And girl, let me tell you, but let me tell you, <laughs> if you're telling me that's not a sport and get your heart rate, um, you know, spike, yeah. uh, it most def right? It most definitely is. Drill and cheer. You know, that's a sport too. And so we're all about um, finding as many activities and, and, and physical activities as possible and, you know, providing opportunities for our kids to see what they're good at um, just so that we can move um, for the benefit of our wellness. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so important, even if we're never going to be athletes, um, professionally. So, uh, you guys are celebrating 40 years, um, and mm -hmm. having this summit and it's also just by coincidence, maybe by design, exactly a hundred days out from, <laughs> uh, from the Olympics, right? I would like to say that we were uh, strategic in that, but it just happened to be serendipity. Uh, but yeah, we're 100 days out from the Paris Olympics, um, and so we're super, you know, excited about Mayor Bass, um, you know, at the closing ceremonies accepting the Olympic flag from the mayor of Paris um, and bringing it back to Los Angeles, and then we'll be on the clock for 28. Wow, on the clock for 28. <laughs> That's that sounded like someone who knows exactly what that means. <laughs> What does it mean to you? <laughs> well, it's four, four, four years out, four right, years out. Right. So, um, you know, it's, it's the transition at the closing ceremonies. Uh, the mayor will receive the flag. She'll be, bring it here. And um, exactly, well, not exactly, but approximately four years later, um, July 14th, 2028, the opening ceremonies for Los Angeles um, will come back to L.A. for the third time. That's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about it myself. Um, so what, how can people participate more? You know, folks that are just listening right now and finding out about this. See, you guys do so many different things, uh, including I wish more of our youth uh, parents that are, you know, coaching would take some of your classes. I mean, there's, you guys offer yeah. so many things. What, um, what, what should people know and do if they want to get more involved with the work that you're doing and specifically the summit? Yeah, no, for, thanks for asking. Um, first of all, uh, visit LA84.org to learn more. That's our website. Uh, make sure to follow us on our social handles at LA84 um, and then LA84 Foundation. And then certainly a plug for me, Renata Angelino. There's a lot of information on um, the work that we do. You know, I capture on my social handles as well. And I think, um, you know, attend our summit if you can. It's Wednesday. I think we might have a few tickets left over. Um, we have a huge play day uh, planned June 29th. Um, that's going to be our community block party uh, to celebrate uh, 40 years of impact um, and getting uh, the, the, the world, quite frankly, to move. Um, we have activations. Uh, we'll have activations across the country. Um, and then find ways to get involved locally. Um, I think to your point, take a coaching education class from L84 Foundation or one of our partners. Um, you know, volunteer at your 
um, your local recreation and parks center. Um, you know, find go out and walk with your kids. Um, you know, throw a ball or um, you know do some jump ropes or you know double dutch if you can. You know, I think our message is. The, the, the transformational benefits of just being active are so important to, um, you know, what ails society today. Um, you know, I'm going to work out after, um, after our conversation, <laughs> and it just makes me feel much better so I can deal with my stress and anxiety. You know, I can regulate my behavior a little bit more, and I think we've forgotten why, uh, how important it is uh, to just move and to be in community with, with others through sport plan movement. Um, and then, you know, if you do have the ability, um, certainly the work that we do takes resources. And so if there's opportunities for you to, you know, donate either to us or to an organization, um, and you can find those organizations on our website, um, you know, really every dollar helps um, us help more kids play. Uh, and so those are the ways I'd say uh, to get involved. Um, and certainly, um, you know, one last thing I'll say is, you know, be aware of the inequities that exist in communities of color, in particular poor communities of color. Uh, and that's the work that we're doing, um, you know, as we mark our 40th anniversary and look to the future um, is really, um, you know, we've coined this term play equity um, to uh, demonstrate the importance of every kid, regardless of their income, regardless of what they look like, regardless of the sexual orientation, you know, that they can show up at whatever field and that they have an opportunity to be part of a team. And for those of us, those of you, because this is, you know, talk radio, we're not a so we complain and we build on a lot of things. One of them is, you know, what's happening to black people in this sport or why aren't there more black people in that sport? And uh, that what your your mission goes to the heart of that. Right. Because if we don't have the opportunity to try it, be exposed to it and get skillful at it as children, um, it's probably a lot less likely to happen. Yeah, Dominique, hundred percent, and that's what we've been doing. But um, you know, there's so much need out there, yeah. um, and our our resources. You know, even though we benefit from a small surplus, small portion of the surplus from the '84 games, our resources are really tiny compared to you know other larger foundations. And you know, I grew up in humble beginnings, and so we spread those resources really thin, and you know, use our platform to celebrate these incredible organizations on the ground. Um, with these major sporting events, you know, coming to LA, not just the Olympics, but the World, World Cup, Cup and Super Bowl, yeah. <laughs> right? And college football playoffs. Yeah. You know, we've partnered with the Los Angeles Sports and Entertainment Commission to, you know, be the partner um, to help them with their social impact legacy. And so we're being as creative as we can to spread these resources. But I'll tell you why it's super important for, you know, your listeners out there to see the benefit and the power of sports. I played sports in high school. Sports was everything to me as this awkward, mixed race, middle school kid um, that just was shy and couldn't find her voice. And my athletic career ended in high school. But I tell you, sports helped me find my voice, helped me find my confidence, helped me find my strength, helped me see what was possible if you're willing to put in the work uh, and show up. And there is no question in my mind that I would not be the president and CEO of this legacy of the 1984 Olympic Games if it wasn't for sports. And so there's so many, many of our kids in the communities that, you know, you and I are from that have talent, but they just don't have the opportunity yeah. to succeed. Yeah. And our work is about matching that talent with opportunity so that there's more Renatas and Dominiques out there doing badass things. <laughs> Well, it's great to talk with you. I'm going to hold you to uh, another conversation, um, hopefully soon. And uh, congratulations on 40 years. Thank you for all the great work you guys are doing. Thank you, Dominique, and thank you for all the work, great work that you're doing. Renata Simmerl, <laughs> LA84.org, continuing our conversations on all things Left Coast when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. Are you wet shaven? You'll get razor bumps. Nah, pops. I'm good with Gillette Skin Guard. How long you been growing that beard mama hates anyway? <laughs> Since 77. I shaved and got ingrown so bad. That's why I use the Gillette Skin Guard razor, face scrub, shave gel, and moisturizer. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? 
<laughs> Your mama's going to love this one. <laughs> the best a man can get keeps getting better with Gillette Skin Guard. Buy now at a retailer near you. I love springtime. The sunshine, the longer days. But I don't love stressing about outfits for all of our plans. Between brunches, showers, and spring break, we need looks that keep up and savings that keep it under budget. That's where Kohl's comes in. I scored 25% off dresses for myself. And with the 15% off going on, I got my daughter a dress for under 22 bucks. Plus, I earned Kohl's cash. So if you want to stress free spring too, shop at Kohl's. Select styles. Some exclusions apply. Women's dresses, coupons do not apply. Offers end April 21st. See store or Kohl's.com for details. We've got a lot to talk about. Hi, I'm Zoe Williams, a.k.a. The Voice of Reason, encouraging you to join me weekdays from 7 to 9 p.m. for the world's most intriguing relationship radio roundtable. Every night, I facilitate and encourage our loyal listeners to participate in the most engaging relationship discussions you'll hear anywhere. So make it a point to rendezvous with me, Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Trust me, your relationships will never be the same. The VOR is on fire tonight. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk, 151880. We've got your black. black. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawon'twait.com. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique DePrima right now. Right now. And, um, yeah, so happy to be here with you as always. And I invite you in, 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. On this Talking Point Tuesday, I want to note a couple of things that I meant to mention yesterday, but sometimes we get so busy, the phones get to percolating, the chat gets to percolating. Um, First of all, I want to congratulate Dr. Melina Abdullah and all of the women who were honored by the Los Angeles Sentinel at their um, uh, Women of Courage uh, event. It was packed, jam-packed. and that was pretty cool because it's, uh, you know, it's great to see a, a room full, a packed room full of people honoring black women. It's called 2024 Power Leadership and Influence of the Black Woman. There was a sit down conversation between iconic LA news anchor Pat Harvey and the only black woman in the Senate, LaFonza Butler. That was powerful. We had a surprise. Uh, The vice president of the United States, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, came unannounced. And so in that moment, you had the uh, two uh, black women senators in uh, of recent history on the stage together uh, at this black event honoring women, um, which was LaFonza Butler and the vice president. Kamala Harris. And of course, we know that our own Dr. Melina Abdullah has been picked by Cornell West, Dr. Cornell West, the two PhDs for president uh, to be his vice presidential running mate. So that was interesting. You have two black women uh, who are running for vice president. I wonder if that's ever happened before. Not sure. Maybe it has. I haven't looked into it. But uh, certainly it was a powerful moment. It was uh, lovely to see these incredible women getting some flowers. Um, you know, the uh, the turnout, the enthusiasm, and the love was stellar. And the room was packed with power players. P- 
people that move the needle. Um, of course, Holly Mitchell was one of the honorees. Um, Sharice Bremon Weaver, who is just an amazing leader over the Brotherhood Crusade and more. News, traffic, and sports right now. Let me continue this conversation only on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The House is expected to send articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Senate today. The move will force the Democratic-led Senate to take up the matter of impeachment against Mayorkas. Republicans in the House impeached Mayorkas in February over his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. In Ohio, Cleveland City Council members Richard Starr and Kevin Conwell have joined with those calling for the city to fire the newly selected city safety advisor. The Cleveland NAACP last week called for the termination of Philip McHugh, citing a 2016 lawsuit in which McHugh was accused of violating the civil rights of an elderly black couple while working as a police detective in Washington, D.C. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Save big during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off, plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. Valid through 417, appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers are on the doorstep of making the NBA playoffs, but they're facing a difficult scenario. If they win their play-in game tonight in New Orleans, the Denver Nuggets are waiting for them in the first round. If the Lakers lose tonight, they'll play Friday night against Sacramento or Golden State for the privilege of a first-round matchup with Oklahoma City, the number one seed in the Western Conference. Either option presents a tough task for the Lakers. The L.A. Sparks, who haven't made the playoffs in three years, had the number two and number four picks in the WNBA draft last night. With the number two pick, the Sparks chose Stanford center Cameron Brink, the two-time National Defensive Player of the Year. At number four, the Sparks chose Tennessee forward Rakia Jackson, a third team All-American. The Sparks selected USC forward Mackenzie Forbes in the third round. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. We ask seniors how to prevent Medicare scams. My best advice, if you get a phone call, do not talk to the person. These people are well-trained. Don't talk to them. They don't know me. They're just trying to scam me. Don't be fooled. Hang up. Just hang up. Never give out your Medicare number. They're going to get your number to put in a false claim. If I get a call from someone, I don't pick up the phone. And should I pick up the phone and they ask for information, then I hang up. How do you detect Medicare fraud? Just like I check my credit card statements, I check my Medicare statements monthly. Scammers can get a hold of your number, order medical devices through your account, and you're not even going to know about it if you don't look at your statement. Check your statement every month. If you get your statement and you see something that you know you did not have done, you report it. Call your senior Medicare patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 855-613-7080. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abvi. Your floors can go from clean to dirty fast. From juice spills, whoops, to muddy paw prints, to little sticky finger marks. Good thing your Swiffer WetJet works fast too. Swiffer WetJet easily cleans everyday messes as quick as they happen. The next mess is right around the corner. 
<sighs> so grab your Swiffer wet jet and just spray, push, all clean. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Hey, I got a question for you. You hate bending over to put on your shoes. Wish you should just put them on standing or sitting without ever having to touch them. If so, then I have the shoe for you. Introducing new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins. With new Skechers Slip-Ins, you just step in and off you go. You don't even need to lace up. So how do Skechers Slip-Ins work? Well, there's a special smooth comfort pillow in the heel that helps your foot slide right into place. So just step in them and go. Find new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins for the whole family at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Thanks for waking up with Dominique DePrima on KBLA Talk 1580. And I invite you in, 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. Uh, did you guys, did you see the state of the city last night? Uh, Mayor Karen Bass um, laying out her vision for the city of Los Angeles and talking about what's happened in the year past. Love to hear your thoughts about it. I thought it was a great speech. Get into that a little bit more. Um, I just realized I did not finish the uh, roll call that I was doing. The honorees included, um, as I said, Sharice Bremon, weaver of the, um, of the Brotherhood Crusade, where she does amazing work. Also, Yvonne Wheeler, who is over the L.A. County Federation of Labor, certainly one of the most powerful organizations on the entire, um, not just on the West Coast, in the country. Uh, Supervisor Holly Mitchell of the 2nd Supervisorial District, uh, congrats on your win there, Supervisor, and congrats on being honored. She actually, speaking of great speeches, um, had a really, a really interesting and excellent uh, speech there. LaFonza Butler, Senator, I should say, Senator LaFonza Butler was honored. And um, our own Melina Abdullah, who, as I said, is, you know, now a candidate to be the vice president of the United States. And um, it was hosted by uh, Pat Harvey and Pat Prescott, two legendary women named Pat, um, Marla Gibbs, of course, the star of the show, the headliner of the um, of the honorees. So that was a beautiful event. And um, thanks to all who came out and supported and congrats to all of the honorees. I also want to say thank you to everyone that I met and everyone who came out to support Pathways LA. I had the honor of emceeing their event, their annual event, um, under the leadership of a black woman, uh, Tamika Farr, just um, really centering childcare. And if you've ever been a mama or a dad who has child rearing duties, you realize that childcare is, I think it's like the most under discussed vital resource in our country. You know, you, you look at workforce issues, you look at issues of child education, children thriving, playing, what we were just talking about with Renata Simrall and LA84, is a crucial component is child care. And I think during the emergency phase of the pandemic, that really hit home, uh, women being more impacted by the pandemic financially than men, because... If we have to choose between putting our child in danger and quitting a job, most of us are going to quit a job or we're going to try to have the kid and the job, which was a real whole entire nightmare for those of us who tried it. Suddenly, you know, you're doing a radio show and you're also the principal, the lunch lady, you know, recess uh, monitor and uh, security, you're everything all at once. So uh, that's what um, Pathways LA does. They train um, child care workers and they provide, um, you know, guidance for them. They also have schools and different 
support programs for parents uh, and educational programs for kids. So it's an excellent organization. Thanks to everyone came out that came out, and I was honored to be chosen to MC that. Um, yeah. So state of the city, the mayor was in uh, great form. We are at a crossroads, I think, in this city as the mayor, you know, on day one or maybe it was day two, declared a state of emergency with the unhoused. And now here we are. Um, this is our second second state of the city address going into a new budget season. She spoke on, you know, her budget and how she'll be presenting it shortly. But we're also at a point where I guess you could say the honeymoon phase is over and we're starting to see more critical coverage of the mayor and certainly more impatience around the issue of the unhoused, which is natural when you've got tens of thousands of people living on your streets. But also, um, I hope that we understand that we all have to be part of this. Of course, the mayor focused on her locking arms, um, you know, locking arms with different levels of government in the private sector message, which seems to have been quite effective. Uh, you did have, you know, the um, Board of Supervisors present there, um, represented there. As usual, the mayor gives credit to everybody and um, gives a lot of accolades for the work and progress of the various projects that different people have done. She is amazing as a uniter. I would have rather she had left KDL off that list, to be honest with you. I know that he still sits in the city council, but he's still a disgraced racist, anti-renter, anti-indigenous, homophobic individual who was caught on tape showing all of those sides of himself, and including self-hate, and who is actually running for re-election right now. So the little pat on the back from the mayor um, provided a bit of legitimacy that I, I would have preferred that she did not bestow. I don't know that she can praise everyone else in the council and skip him, but I would have liked to, I would have definitely liked to have seen that. Um, she talked a lot about the Olympics, getting ready for the Olympics, and that's a huge project for the city. She framed it as a big opportunity. And although we've, the, I know there's a no Olympics, you know, organization, and there's lots of progressive activists that hate the Olympics. I'm not one of them. I love the Olympics. Uh, I think it brings people from all different nations together to exchange cultures and conversation. I think that uh, it celebrates greatness and athletic, athleticism, achievement, hard work. You know, even if you're blessed with major talent, you are not going to be an Olympian without doing some serious work. I love to see that level of achievement and accomplishment. But we also know that for some cities, some Olympic hosts, it's been a drain on their coffers. They've had to build or... A, a, you can't say had to, but they've decided to build Olympic stadiums and they've taken harsh initiatives against the unhoused and all kinds of things. But you look at L.A., obviously I wasn't here in 1984, but we managed to revamp existing stadiums that needed to be upgraded and then offer them as community resources after um, I'm thinking of the swim stadium, for example, on on uh, MLK Boulevard, if you haven't ever been in there, it's open during these hot summer days. And yes, we have a few of those ahead of us. And you can go in there for just a couple bucks and swim in a gorgeous Olympic-sized pool or let your kids do it. Splash around in the fountains. Uh, we managed to use our existing facilities and somehow, under the leadership of the, you know, experienced business persons, entertainment executives and others that, including Pete Uberoth, who led that effort, we came out making money off of it, enough money to fund the LA84 Foundation, which, as Renata Simmerell points out, is not a huge foundation compared to others, but has been funding youth sports since 1984 in all kinds of things, including supplementing 
our public schools at times when they have been about to eliminate. I remember at one point, I think they were about to eliminate football at some some schools and LA 84 stepped in. They've built um, basketball courts and soccer fields uh, and football fields for all kinds of public schools. They do. They fund a lot of programs inside Beyond the Bell, which is an after-school program for children, many times low-income kids who would not have somewhere else to go. This is the legacy of the Olympics in Southern California. We actually know how to throw a big O party. We already have venues. And in the case of things like the people mover that they're hurrying up and trying to build and upgrade the airport, those are things that we were planning to do anyway. We're speeding it up for the Olympics and the World Cup. We're not breaking the bank for the Olympics and the World Cup. You saw the mayor and her delegation in Washington, what was it, last week, getting money from the feds, getting some of our tax money back to hasten these transportation projects. Um, you've seen, you know, that already set in motion with the delegation going to Paris, looking at best practices, not just so that we can profit off of it, but so that we can have the most humane, humanitarian, best practices in place for our Olympics. So I think that, um, that you know, hopefully she's right, and this will bring a lot of opportunity to L.A. The precedent would seem to show that that is possible here in LA. Maybe not everywhere in the world. They might not have the infrastructure. They might not have the experience or the budget or even the capacity. But this is Hollywood, baby. <laughs> we, we, you know, we know how to do a really, really big show. Um, so the mayor talked about that. She also did talk about houselessness. And uh, we'll get into that a bit more. Always taking your phone calls. Call to action. 800-920-1580. We are amplifying black and progressive voices around the clock. We are KBLA Talk 1580. Say the quiet part out loud. loud. KBLA Talk 1580. I spray and scrub, but the soap scum in my bathtub is still there. I spray and scrub. But the burnt sauce on my stovetop sticks around. Sprays can leave grime behind. But new Mr. Clean Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser combines the scrubbing power of an eraser with the cleaning power of Dawn to melt away tough messes on contact. Just wet, squeeze, and erase. Stop spraying, start erasing, and clean with more magic than ever with new Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. There are many healthcare organizations serving our community. Not all are dedicated to community partnerships that educate, build trust, inspire hope, and improve outcomes. Providence has a robust community outreach program and has dedicated $50 million over the next five years to support organizations addressing health disparities in local communities of color. Examples of this commitment include the Biddy Mason Community Wellness Center on the first AME campus, providing medical screenings, mental health therapy, nutrition, and culturally sensitive holistic classes. The Black Mama's Glowing Peer Support Group that focuses on maternal mental health, birth planning, and social support. Providence is committed to building trusted partnerships with community organizations to better understand and dismantle structural, racial, and cultural barriers to better health. During Minority Health Month, Providence is sponsoring Health for a Better World. Informative conversations with Providence health professionals on Urban Family Focus every Saturday in April at 7 a.m. To find a Providence Health System facility near you, log on to Providence.org. To help combat climate change, LADWP is helping neighborhoods have better access to electric vehicles by awarding nearly $130 million in EV rebates to customers just like you. From big savings on used EVs to building new charging plazas, LADWP is charging ahead to help all Angelinos experience the benefits of EVs. Get rebates of up to $4,000 for a used EV and $1,750 for a charger. Learn more at LADWP.com slash EV. That's LADWP dot com slash ev spilled your drink quick the quicker picker upper bounty picks up spills quicker and each sheet is two times more absorbent so you can use less than the leading ordinary brain so you can get back to your night bounty 
the quicker picker upper. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Broadcasting live from Lamar Park, USA. USA. Welcome back to your home for unapologetically progressive radio. KBLA Talk 1580. So Mayor Karen Bass on yesterday with her state of the city. Uh, Molly Bell in the chat room shouting out Richard Reardon, who was mayor of L.A. Uh, during some tough times and made his transition on last year. But Mayor Bass announcing something called L.A. for L.A., which is meant to do something I've long hoped that the city would do, buying up some hotels and apartment buildings that can be converted into both interim and permanent housing with um, services available there. Um, that, that LA for LA, according to the LA Times, has got a $3 million grant from the Conrad Hilton Foundation and a $5 million loan from the California Community Foundation just to get started. They're going to be raising more money um, to do what they call master leases, where the city actually rents out uh, an entire building um, and, or, and also can um, finance construction of their own buildings specifically purposed for that. And I think that's important because... It, to some degree, it can take us oh, out of this cycle of always depending on the market um, and the mercy of landlords. The other thing about master leasing, this is something the county is also doing, is that you can house those um, services that are needed for some unhoused folks who are coming back into the mainstream um, to get to have those on site. Uh, you can also, um, you know, control the pricing and you, c you can help control the pricing. Sometimes they can negotiate down. They can obviously control it if they own the buildings, own the hotels. And, on, and, and to me, <clears throat> even though it's a little tough out the gate, meaning you've got to plop down large amounts of money to get these properties, um, it's going to be less expensive long term. What we're paying to rent hotel rooms in these crime magnet buildings where prostitution and child trafficking and drug selling and who knows what activity is taking place where they're renting rooms by the hour and then you're trying to get people mentally stable and sober and well in that environment and we're feeding these businesses which are not helping our communities to thrive. They are, in fact, just the opposite. They're undermining the safety, uh, undermining, you know, the security, the opportunity, the environment in our neighborhood. So I'm really, I'm really hopeful about this. Of course, you know, there are challenges, and, and the mayor talked about those as well uh, in her state of the city. I... I expected nothing less, but I felt like um, it was it was a powerful um, and thoughtful address to the city. It's a perfect time to call me, 809-20-1580. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come when we forward... Come forward includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. power. J.P. Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. Visit jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity and get the tools to help reach your financial goals. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheet. Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. Smelling fresher than ever? It's the sheet. 
Oh, so soft fabric. Ooh la la, it's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes, you know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets, more freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate meets a scholarly match. Hey. It does. Um, yeah, so we know that the Inside Safe program, um, according to the L.A. Homeless Services Authority, has moved 2,600 people indoors from street encampments. That's just inside safe. There are other programs still um, working on this. We know that um, some of those folks have returned to homelessness. Uh, about one-fourth is what um, LA Homeless Service Authority is saying, and that 38 have actually died. Um, that's really sad, but it's something I think we have to face the music on, right, which is that People are dying on our streets every single day. Maybe not every day, every year, right? And so that's why this is an emergency. And I, th I think the mayor was right to remind us that this is an emergency. Um, and it's, it's still an emergency. Just because she declared it such, uh, she said it was no less than a disaster. Um, so I think it was... I think it was a good combination of telling the truth about the challenges and, and the fact that we're still in an emergency. No, I haven't magically solved it. But also uh, providing um, an update on progress and reasons to be hopeful, reasons to feel uh, like we are, we are able to make a difference. She emphasized that she's, you know, um, brought in... Um, she started this new community safety department, which is alongside public safety, meant to have a more holistic approach to keeping uh, the city safe. And she, um, you know, laid out what she plans to do and what's still to be done um, in the year ahead. Um, so that's, you know... I, I think that's what we can expect. I know that it's far from perfect, but I think it is what what we asked for. Um, I haven't done a deep dive into this yet, but my initial reaction to um, USC uh, banning a pro-Palestinian -Pal valedictorian from speaking at the graduation, Asna, Tabassum. She's graduating from USC. She was picked as valedictorian. And um, she's been uninvited to speak because of so-called safety reasons. But this is coming. The safety concern came after groups, outside groups, in other words, groups that are not even part of the university, criticized her being selected as valedictorian. To me, that's shameful. Shame on you for caving to pressure from outside camp campus. Now, there may be something I don't know yet or I'm not seeing, but to me, if you're picked for valedictorian, you don't get picked for valedictorian because you're Palestinian or because you're black or because you're white. You get picked because you're supposedly among the best and brightest, right? Isn't that what valedictorian means? Um, they, the provost, Andrew Guzman, said they'd been getting threats. And they um, have been attacking her, the, the uh, valedictorian. And so it's escalated to the point where they felt they had to... Um, uninvite her from speaking. He says there's no free speech entitlement to speak at a commencement. 
The issue is how to best maintain campus security and safety, period. I call BS. I mean, I, I'm not saying that you, you have a right to speak at a private university, but if you've been selected valedictorian, getting uninvited is really different than having a right to speak. Perfect time to call me. News, traffic, and sports, then more on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The House is expected to send articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Senate today. The move will force the Democratic-led Senate to take up the matter of impeachment against Mayorkas. Republicans in the House impeached Mayorkas in February over his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. In Ohio, Cleveland City Council members Richard Starr and Weiser. The Cleveland NAACP.